me know and we'll make sure it gets answered. So Kelly and Chris, Anne, it's all yours. Thank you. We are delighted to be here to talk about this really exciting project um, and the part that the Army of Women played in it. Um, I'm Kelly Carpenter. I'm a clinical psychologist and a health researcher. And I'm here with Chris Ann Schmitz, who is an oncology social worker. And Chris Ann was the person who helped develop the workbook. And she also helped run the study. So any of you who are in the study, you probably emailed and talked to Chris Ann. Um, Hi there. And I also want to um, just mention that we have Vivian Lai, our Tulare's business development manager, and Arlene Van Scheich, another principal investigator from Tulare, here with us. And um, I also want to just recognize the National Cancer Institute, part of the National Institute of Health, who graciously funded this project. Um, and just remember that the government is good thing. <laughs> um, things anyway. So, <laughs> um, so, you know, some women do a really good job of coping with their cancer diagnosis. They have support systems in place and a reasonable pre-existing stress level, but other people have difficulty. Their stress level skyrockets. They may become depressed or anxious. Um, there's, this intervention that we're going to talk about today is for women who are struggling, who are having um, more trouble adjusting to their breast cancer diagnosis, who are depressed, anxious, or very stressed. Um, and so what we did was we took a face-to-face -face group intervention that had been tested in a number of university settings um, where people met weekly, uh, groups of six to eight women met weekly with a the therapist and did this coping skills training and relaxation training um, and discussed what was going on in their lives. Um, but then the, when the research was over, people couldn't find those groups to join because um, they're expensive and a lot of people live in rural areas. So we decided to develop a web-based version of this intervention. So we developed a, what we call, it's kind of in a workbook uh, format with 10 chapters. Um, and it's designed for people to go through one chapter every week or so. Um, there's lots of interactive coping skills, training exercises. Um, talking about how stress affects your body and how to think differently about your stress and your situations, um, how to deal with emotions, how to, how to muster your social support network. Um, we also had guided journaling exercises to help women kind of think about their experience, uh, experience going through their breast cancer journey. There were lots of audio recorded um, guided relaxation and meditation exercises that uh, we actually sent out an MP3 player preloaded with the exercises, but you could also download them on iTunes or from the computer itself. And it had lots of video-based um, narration. Um, there was a social work character who kind of was acted as the therapist and led people through the workbook, and lots of video-based patient stories. And Christian is going to um, tell you a little bit more about the workbook. Oh, well, for that. Um, I'm going to, um, I just wanted to say a little bit more why we chose the web um, to, to do this workbook. Um, internet interventions, there's been quite a bit of research taking face-to-face -face, uh, approaches and turning them into internet-based approaches. And they found that in general they're about as effective as face-to-face -face treatment. Um, and people really like that they can go their own pace, they can do it at night, they don't have to arrange for childcare. Um, it's private. No one knows that they're doing them. Um, they can just be disseminated with lower cost per person. Um, and then they can be revised really quickly. If research, new research comes out that changes something, it's easy to go in and change it, whereas with a book, you have to republish the whole book. Um, so that's what our company does. We, we develop web-based interventions for patients as well as training programs for healthcare providers. So back to the workbook. So this is an example of the home screen of the workbook. And you, here you can see access to all 10 chapters of the workbook. I'll use my cursor. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it or not. But um, there are other features, that some of which Kelly mentioned, including the journal, which you can access from the very top of the screen. There was also a feature as part of the workbook that was a discussion board or an online forum where women 
participating in the study could post questions to other women and, and people could dialogue in that way. So we had access to the forum up here as well as a library of all of the audio exercises that were available in the workbook. So you can kind of see all the topics that the workbook covered. A lot of different things from communication skills training to um, social support. Mm -hmm. And when do you, when are you, you thinking is best for people to use this kind of workbook? Well, you know, time of diagnosis or once they're finished treatment or. Um, I think it can really vary. We definitely had people we interviewed for the study who said they wish they'd had it earlier. Um, uh -huh. And our average was people were about eight months out of diagnosis for the study, and a lot of people were wishing they had it earlier. So I think if they have the time, earlier would be better. But for, for some people, they, they just need to get through treatment, and that's what their focus is, and then they can do the workbook after treatment. I think either right. way it would work. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so Kelly mentioned earlier that there were audios and videos throughout the workbook. This is an example of the very first time um, the users are introduced to those women. Um, so you've got an opportunity to see a, a sort of a video introduction from each of these breast cancer survivors. And then throughout the workbook, they come back up again sharing little bits and pieces about their story or the ways they've used some of the skills presented in the workbook. Here's an example of the first page in Chapter 2, um, where you might be able to see all of the different lessons that are, will be covered in that particular chapter. And you can also see over on the left, there's different sections. Each chapter has the same section. So they all have a, some kind of skill building exercises, then a different kind of relaxation. Um, and then the journaling, and then talking about uh, trying to integrate the skills into your real life. Um, so by the time they're done with all 10 chapters, they've learned 10 different ways to do relaxation, 10 different sets of skills. And, mm -hmm. I, li I like the fact that you've reminded me how do I navigate this workbook. That's for people like me who come back two days later and go, how do I do this again? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. So um, part of our, um, we're funded not just to develop the workbook, but also to, to show that it works. So um, we did a, we planned a study where we um, randomly assigned women with early stage breast cancer to either get the workbook right away or to be on a waiting list and get the workbook 10 weeks later. And we did screen for distress, so all the women in the study had elevated distress, anxiety, or stress. Um, and we gave them questionnaires at the beginning and then after the 10-week um, intervention and then again a, a third time um, after the second group of women got to use the workbook. Um, and I'm only going to talk about, show you the, the results from the first two times. So this is when the women, before they get their intervention and then after the uh, first group of women got the workbook. So we were looking for 130 participants. And we started off just recruiting in the way that we normally recruit for studies, by going to cancer support groups, posting flyers in cancer treatment centers. Um, some ad we think we tried some advertising on cancer websites. And in between April and May, we got 15 people signed up, which was kind of slow. So then the Army of Women e-blast was sent on June 2nd, and in less than one week we had 540 people interested, and we just shut it down because that was a lot of people. <laughs> that was so exciting for us. <laughs> no, we have we have a great group out there ready to help. Yep. Yeah. So we had our list of uh, 540 interested women, and this is we thought you might be interested in who they were. So this is just the Army of Women, all those 540 people, and kind of. You say they have a really wide um, age range, mostly white, which is probably to be expected. That's great. Um, and then this is actually of the people who were in the study. Um, again, a wide age range, 28 to 73, which is awesome. Mostly married, mostly white, and a very well-educated group. 90% had at least some college. And this treatment would appeal to, I think, to more educated people with higher education level. 
Um, so they were about average to age of 50 when they were diagnosed, and they were average eight months out from diagnosis, mostly stage one and two breast cancer. And most of them had had chemo either chemotherapy or radiation or both. And so I'm going to show you some of the um, outcomes. So you see the, the pink line are the women who got the workbook. And the dark blue line are the control women who were waiting to use the workbook. And you can see in the 10 weeks, this is for anxiety, they both got better on their anxiety, but the pe women using the workbook got a lot, significantly had more improvement. And you'll see this pattern kind of repeated. So this is depression. You can see the pink, the workbook women. Um, they actually, the red line is the cutoff for depression. So they actually went from depressed to non-depressed. And But the blue line is still getting better. And we think that's because they're in their natural recovery period. So without the workbook, I mean, the women are going to get, they're going to feel better over time anyway. But with the workbook, they got better faster. Great. And this is um, confusion. So this is kind of related. So similar to chemo brain, kind of that muddle-headedness. So you can, can see that the workbook really helps with that, really help people. I think maybe the relaxation helps them focus. What is POMS confusion? What is that? Oh, POMS is the test POMS? you use for confusion. Yeah, it's the profile of mood states. Okay. Uh, plus, yeah, and the confusion subscale. I was confused about POMS. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And this is uh, women's confidence for their ability to cope with cancer. So that went, went up quite a bit. And this is their confidence in changing negative moods. So this is one thing the workbook really emphasized was how to, um, how to change your state of mind, either through relaxation or changing the way you're thinking or by going out and doing something fun or connecting with your family or your social support. That was one thing the workbook really emphasized, and that you can see here that it, it worked. So, so in, in summary, uh, the, the people who used the workbook had some good improvements in the, kind of the key areas, stress and anxiety, depression, kind of chemo brain feeling, and as well as improving things like co their confidence for coping and confidence for changing their negative mood. Um, and as well, they really liked the workbook. They, um, and Chrisanne's going to talk about that in a second. But I also wanted to mention the um, one thing that didn't work so well was our forum, our discussion board. Um, we did not have a lot of women use that. And a lot of them said they were involved with other online support groups. And since this was a, a short-term study, they didn't really feel like they wanted to invest with getting to know people for the short amount of time. And they'd rather stay with their online, their current online support group or they were going to face-to-face -face support groups, or they, you know, they just didn't think they needed the, the forum. So that didn't get used very well. But one thing it was used for was to ask Chrisanne questions. So she went in there and answered everyone's questions. So that was kind of nice. A few testimonials from what women said about the workbook. I really liked the study and the workbook. It has given me a support system that people urged me to find when I was first diagnosed. I really liked the individuals who had stories throughout the workbook and began to feel some of them were friends talking with me. I feel like I'm talking to an old friend when I use the workbook. My stress is a lot better, and I think that is because I know I have this tool to go to. I think some of those comments, especially about the, the personableness um, or the warmth of the workbook, probably surprised us even more than we thought. So we tried to do that. We tried to replicate what you would get in a group therapy session or a group, a support group session by having a, a therapist person who guided you through and having the women be really personal. So it's nice to know that that, that works. Thank you. And we were really excited that um, this was our first um, Web Health Award. So the workbook won a bronze award um, from the Web Health Awards. That's great. Congratulations. Thanks. And so now we are at the phase of dissemination, um, which in interventions like this is always a little challenging because the funding doesn't, doesn't necessarily last for disseminating this and getting this workbook into the hands of breast cancer survivors who could use it. 
Um, so part of our goal is to find an organizational sponsor or maybe healthcare providers, clinics, physicians who would be willing to sponsor it um, and make it available to breast cancer survivors. And we did ask women where they would expect to find this, and they did say most of them said from their healthcare provider. Uh -huh. and we have a pilot study going, a pilot program going with a breast cancer clinic outside of St. Louis where they're offering it to all their patients. Oh, great. Good. You should talk to the American Society of Breast Surgeons. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, because that's earlier than, say, oncologists. Right. Or maybe the oncology nursing. But anyway, you probably know. Yeah, um, uh, I, I want to say to our audience, um, questions. We're open for questions. So uh, uh, put them out there. Let us know what you, if you have any questions on this. And you can, are you, yeah, I thought you had a little more. Yeah, you know, a little more. One thing we have tried to do in the meantime is to make the workbook accessible for purchase on Amazon.com. Um, and so right now, if you if you go to Amazon and you search under Teleria Inc., you'll find the offering, which, and we've kind of done something where we've paired the access to the online workbook with a paper booklet of all of the worksheets that you find throughout the workbook as well as an MP3 player that includes all of the um, 21 relaxation exercises. Um, so purchasing the workbook online would get you each of those things. Um, and it's our hope that, you know, it, that might be one avenue where breast cancer survivors find this tool. Very, um, no, go ahead. We, we cannot thank the Army of Women enough for your support of the study. I think we were shot. I, I, we knew you had an Army of Women, <laughs> but <laughs> when the EBLAS was released and we started getting the, the email responses, I think we were much more surprised than we had anticipated. Yeah. And overwhelmed, you know, you really, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> happy, happily overwhelmed. Yeah. You know, you, there's you know, three things you need to do this kind of research. You need the scientists. You need the funding, and you need participants. And none of this research can be done without participants. And we are so grateful to all our 123 participants for the studies. Um, well, thank you. We have a number of questions here. We have um, one is a suggestion from Anne Marie Sicarella. Uh, wouldn't reaching out to online support groups for sponsors be a good way, or at least a good way to get the word out there? Um, that it exists. That's a great idea. A suggestion for yeah, you. There's some, and there's some big online support groups. Yeah, and and then does and how about you know things like even the for profit like WebMD or some of those that have their own or BreastCancer.org that have large online support groups. Those those groups might be willing to 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 uh, help provide it as well. Um, are you researching long-term results of this type of support in regard to recurrence rates, et cetera? Um, and, uh, and that's an interesting question because there certainly is growing data through um, a number of people, Patty Gansing, one of them, that, that decreasing stress uh, may change the biology of the immune system and may actually have an effect on recurrence. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, we, we don't do that kind of research, but certainly our partners at the Hutch are very interested in that. And I know Bonnie McGregor, who is our co-investigator at the Hutch, does um, look at cortisol levels and long-term outcomes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that would be important. Um, another question from Natasha Riley. Um, two qu oh, wait a minute here. Two. Is this product, wait a minute, she's got three here. Does Amazon offer a discount for multiple orders? That's one. Answer that. Do you know the answer? Uh, well, the, since today is the first day it's been available, I don't think we have that yet. But she should certainly email Chris Ann, and we can. Or if there's an email right now up there, email us, and we'll we'll fix it. We'll figure it out for you. Uh, what kind of equipment does a woman need at home in order to be able to participate? And is it avail Would it be useful to someone not online? 
you really, it is web-based, so you do need a, a computer and an internet connection. It doesn't necessarily need to be a broadband connection, um, but you do need some kind of internet connection. You, can, you don't have it on a CD, say, that you could just do it on your computer? No, because the interactivity and the, the data stored on our server, it's, it's um, yeah, it doesn't go on a CD very well. Oh, Chris Ann's reminding me, you also need um, audio capabilities if you want to hear the um, okay. Be like okay. Um, uh, here's another question um, uh, from Ka Kathleen Clavy. I wouldn't. I would just say that it would be helpful for you to to intro this as not for women who aren't handling the journey well, but rather women facing the normal emotions that are experienced and expected with this diagnosis. I think that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. We just wanted to emphasize that not, not everyone would necessarily need this. But yeah, you're right. It's not it's not an abnormal reaction to become. Well, if you just leave it as a way to help you cope, then and let the women decide rather than position it as only if you really need it, kind of thing. You know. That's true. It's really not going to hurt anybody. Right. <laughs> it doesn't have side effects. Uh, no, bad no side, side effects. effects. Uh, okay, Deborah Heim. I'm just two months shy of five years since my diagnosis and still struggle with anxiety. I would be definitely purchasing this workbook. Thank you and keep up the good work. So I also okay. think that's another thing is that some people um, uh, some people could use it even if they're you know a, a little bit further out from their diagnosis um, because the once you've been diagnosed you're changed forever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And we should also maybe mention that really the goal of the workbook is to focus on stress management. And so while there are some examples that are very breast cancer related. There are lots of examples throughout the workbook that are about regular day-to-day -day, day -day stressors that we all might experience. Um, so we had comments from women who were using it saying, you know, this would be good for, for anyone, um, not, not just someone who's kind of actively going through breast cancer, breast cancer treatment. Which brings me to Terry's, uh, Lorenz's question, are there, any, are there portions of the workbook that, that would help spouses as well? Silence. <laughs> I know. Well, Christian actually works with spouses. So why don't you give your opinion, Christian? I mean, we would love to try to find a way to offer a tool like this to spouses. Um, or or a, a, a spouse them. version, maybe. Right, right. That's an awesome idea for a next project. Right. Aha. Uh -huh. Well, you have to give some credit to Terry Lorenz. She came up with it. Yes. Um, right. right. Other questions from Army of Women people out there. We're, we're, uh, anybody else have any questions or any suggestions to how they can make it better? Here's one from Anne Marie again. I'm finding most survivors are denying their feelings. I'm five years out, and there are long-term issues. Fears linger. Yeah. We also had a number of women say things like, um, you know, while I was going through active treatment, I couldn't really think about the emotional side of cancer, and it wasn't until active treatment ended and I was sort of in that phase where I didn't have regular contact with my healthcare team that all of the emotions hit. Um, so, you know, it's, it's very clear that the breast cancer journey is an individual one for, for the women who are going through it. And, and you know, while we do research looking for patterns, um, we also try to make the workbook include enough skills that it would appeal to lots of different women. Yeah, also when women, um, when there are recurrences, that's a whole other set of issues. Um, right. You know, that may be. Um, here's a question again. Is the workbook um, provided in Spanish? You no. Should think about that. Yeah, we should. Uh, and, uh, and then there's a suggestion to tailor the product for the stages of, you know, so early breast cancer and then recurrence, I guess, and, and uh, I think I think that would be a good idea. Um, here's a question uh, from, this is a good one, suggestion from Terry Lorenz. I would be hesitant to buy this for myself as a breast cancer survivor, but I love it as a gift. <laughs> Perhaps marketing it as a gift is a good way to get the word out. Right. That's you can idea. always put it on your Amazon wish list, I guess. <laughs> Uh, and you know, then maybe you should do it on 
there aren't there there are websites like Caring Bridges and that where for to keep friends up to date on your diagnosis, maybe that's the kind of place you need to advertise it so that friends could give it to you as a gift. That's a great that's idea. A great idea. Um, are there any studies for women who don't want to go to the traditional medical route but are going the healing route using alternative mind treatment? That's a, well, in some ways, you could say this is alternative mind treatments in a way. I mean, coping skills and, and ways to de-stress are, are, and to deal with emotions is, are certainly um, sometimes considered by the traditional medicine route as alternative. Uh, right. So I don't... I don't think that this matters what you're, what kind of treatment you're doing. That's right. Other questions? We're here. Other suggestions? You're, you're, you're good at the suggestions here um, this morning. So uh, we'll help them a lot, not just by getting their study done, but figuring out how to get their product out there. So I think they get, they get double benefit from the Army of Women. That's right. Um, any thought of adding an online facilitated weekly chat? That's a good idea. We would love it. <laughs> we would love it if we if we had the funding for it. We would love to create sort of a a, a web for lack of a you know kind of a fun but a network of, of women who are using this tool at the same time who could all um, have the support of each other while they're going through it. I think with 130 women, half of those women were going through it at one time. It just wasn't enough women for us to garner that level of interest and enthusiasm in that type of yeah. forum. If yeah, you get it out there, there then, you, then you have a higher, you could have a higher group. Right. Um, another suggestion is how about each of us suggest this to our oncologist on our next visit. Good yeah. idea, yeah. Deborah. I love it. <laughs> and you know, um, if you want to email this email address, Christiane can send out little cards that you can give your oncologist. Okay, so you see the email address on the on the uh, screen right now, if you email them, they'll send you cards you can give to your oncologist, or you can you can also direct them to the website um, as well, or tell them about the fact that it's on Amazon. So that's a good idea. Good, you guys are great this morning. Um, they are. <laughs> and you know the pilot that study that we had going outside of St. Louis was we got that contact from a participant who told her on her. Um, I don't know if it's our oncologist, but one of her treatment providers about it, and they called us. So that was from an Army of Women participant who did the Aha! Aha, see? So we're, we're, we're really right. We, we have to um, advertise ourselves as a full service, not just to help recruit <laughs> people for studies, but that, <laughs> to help get them out there. We're partners in the studies is what we like yep. to say. Yeah, um, yeah that's pretty true. Other any other questions? from my, my folks out there on this cool, even in LA it's cool this morning, um, uh, morning. Okay, well, we want to thank you very much for um, coming and telling us about the results of the study. It's very exciting. I want to thank everybody who came and listened in. As usual, the, the uh, webinar will be posted on the Army of Women website, so if you want to direct somebody, a friend or someone who couldn't be here to see it later, it will be up there, and you can come back and see it, or they can come back and see it. Um, and thank you very much, and all have a happy holiday. Thank you very much.